Hi everyone, this is Emma Newman and on my video course Piano Well. Uh, this is a new part of my tutorials that is dedicated to Rachmaninoff music. Finally, I started making video about my all-time favorite composer. Actually, I cannot even say he's my favorite composer. I, I think that wouldn't be enough to say I think he is my everything. You know, through his music I could always feel some kind of um, vibrations of another world. Um, every time I would listen to his music, I would feel some kind of energy that is not human being, that is not from this world. And that, ener that energy would give me um, power and strange and knowledge about me and knowledge about my mission and knowledge about this world. Um, so his music would sustain me in siren when my life would fall apart and I think that Rachmaninoff music says something as sacred, significant and powerful for me as prayers and God. So his music was I think my true inspiration to start searching the system in the very first place. It was like powerful, endless inspiration for me to to find a way to play so I could express that energy I felt while listening to his music through my playing, through my performance. That was my only um, desire, that was my only wish that time. Uh, and that was my inspiration <laughs> to create the system. And eventually, after 15 years, I can say I succeeded. So now when I'm playing, I can completely relax. I mean, I can be free, you know? I don't have to um, be in the limits, in the technical limits. Um, I just tune into that energy and just go on, <laughs> you know? absolutely like improvisation for me and this is so beautiful this is what I really wanted to achieve just not to feel any limitations here any limitations here just this energy and and my performance and that's it so I also love to play his music because in despite of greatness and complexity of the sound of his music it's still quite easy and comfortable to play it. You know, comparably with uh, Itches by Chopin, I can say it's much easier to play because um, I don't put too much effort to play his music and my hands wouldn't get fatigued uh, quite far, quite soon and um, sometimes it really seems that, you know, all the notes are written under my fingers already. <laughs> And um, if we talk about this idiot in technical um, way, then, well, this idiot develops very well muscles in your hands over here and your shoulders, by the way. And it also a um, very good exercise to improve clearness in the chord leaves, large leaves, especially in fast tempos. If we talk about the seated in the musical way, then um, that's been said that Rachmaninoff music always differed from others because of his great and large breath and phrases and great culmination. And I can say I could feel that, really feel that, um, only after I correctly analyzed the phrasing, the form and the piece, and I expressed everything through intonation, weight and musical speech. Um, again, guys, you know, <laughs> you can make it, try to make it artificially, but the only way to feel it naturally is while seeing it. You can only feel it through internal intonating of each interval, through, through, through intonation. Um, and this is such a pleasure actually to play this way because when I played it, the music that being, you know, like hysterical when sometimes I could feel pennies play that because I started distributing energy within the whole piece and, you know, I keep energy when it's necessary and I give all the energy when it's come to culmination part, to the climax part uh, and the music, because I'm making good phrasing, the music started flowing, freely flowing, and brought me that large breath that 
everyone talks about <laughs> in, in the Rachmaninoff music. Another thing that's been said about Rachmaninoff music and performance that it had very high expressiveness that was made in the within the limits of steady time of steady pulsation. Um, and again, you can you can make this like you can feel this expression through intonation and musical speech and phrasing and form, um, emotional image. But the true Rachmaninoff expressiveness, I think, you can only feel when you make all of this within the limits of steady pulsation. Um, many students lacking on this, including me. You know, I played this etude over. A year. 10 years ago and now when I came back and I started using my old system I could feel how much it is different from what I played before mm, really I mean the steady time it makes all the difference in the Rachmaninoff music so <laughs> um, now let's go ahead and start our tutorial and I will explain you again every single step from my system what I was doing from the very beginning to the very last stage of analyzing and learning the piece. I'm gonna start this um, analysis with showing you guys how I rearrange nodes between the hands in some places in the city. Um, the reason is because I still want to keep my hands loose and relaxed while playing and any possible unnecessary stretching of hands could you know could cause some fatigue and tension so I'm trying to avoid any stretching of my hand. So in the very beginning I'm taking three notes with my left hand and only two notes with my right hand. This way, not that. And in the bar number three, where there is some crossing over here, I don't do this. I simply, instead of this, I do this. <laughs> so I'm playing B flat with my right hand and A flat with my left hand. And um, Any similar places, I do the same. So I'm not doing this one, I'm doing this one. So just go ahead guys and if you can see there is any um, possibilities you can <laughs> you can make yourself easy and make it. Um, by the way, on the bar 9 and 10 over here, Even if I move my elbow here, still <laughs> these three uh, fingers not really stable, so I'm using this fingering. One, two, four, five, one. And I'm playing bass together with the first note. And I'm playing it on the beat. And the same here. critical here so what 
<laughs> okay, moving out, well, I will show you later. Mm -hmm. I'll stand the very last page when there is a possibility to take, mm, for example, here. change a little bit and show you how I'm making pedal here because <laughs> I think this is one of the uh, maybe question a very common question about pedal so um, when I choose the pedal I I try to to reach the huge and powerful sounding in this piece and that's why I didn't hesitate to um, mix some harmonies together. And maybe for you, you know, you might be afraid to do this, but actually if you play them together on the one pedal, you can realize that doesn't really sound like cloudy, you know, it's still clear. It still create like another kind of harmony <laughs> um, and I like that so I mean if you don't agree <laughs> with me you don't have to do that um, so this is what I'm doing here these two bars I'm playing on one pedal <clears throat> and starting from bar 3 I'm actually changing pedal from the bass the P. 
piano and on the room, <laughs> on the, you know, like acoustic that you have. This one again, I keep one pedal during the whole bar. Ah. 
upbeat and then an offbeat. And the same here. And I'm changing the pedal with the bass, of course. So that would be about pedal. Now let's start. Um, our tutorial finally <laughs> and go step by step by piano well system. So the very first step as usually we arrange music in different timbres in our head and imagine them with movement and glissando between notes. And um, Okay, if we talk about timbres here, each of you can uh, use your own timbres, but just won't give you an advice what I did. Well, if we have this chordal texture here, of course it's gonna play like string groups, it's gonna be played by strings of group of instruments, maybe cellos if it's here, and violins if it's over here, and violas over here. And if we have the melody, I prefer to imagine it in a very beautiful flowing, like in huge space, vocal voice. And again, if we, it could be like low soprano, mezzo soprano, that goes high to soprano. Um, till the very top. I think if I have double notes, imagine two voices together and here two voices this one again two voices you know Just using violins until the end of this page. And starting from here, because I want to really feel and hear these melodies, I'm making it in two different kind of voices, like soprano, and that could be mezzo soprano or tenor. between this huge distance and here please keep in mind that it all comes to A flat so So basically the voice is here. So 
make sure that the rest is just trim so it wouldn't mix mix up together. Um, make sure guys that you actually able to imagine um, every single note in this piece even though there is some chords that you might play eight or seven notes together you really have to imagine every single note in these chords to be able to control your fingers to be able to play with relaxed hands so all the tension will be here not here and um, yeah like over here if you still have problem with polyphonic ear well I just suggest to again imagine every note in order and then reduce time until time is zero and you can clearly hear four parts in your hand at the same time so not even one note is out of your imagination yeah that's kind of challenging here <laughs> um, the very first note I'm playing to the left if you're curious <laughs> our wrist, our sound movement, imagination. That's why um, even on this chord we don't play chords like that. You know, absolutely with fixed wrist. Even though in fast tempo it may seem that I don't really move and do, don't do anything, you know, but in slow tempo and inside my hand, my muscles make I'm telling you, they do this movement. So, left, left, left. And again, melody has its own movement. This chord is going to be to the right. If it's lower than previous chord to know, then it's going to be to the left. So just follow this and you will be all right. <laughs> so let's go to the next part. Next part is about finding transition notes for elbow movement. As I said in the beginning, this is etude to um, this etude is to um, improve and master your chord lifts. So we're changing position constantly here, sometimes three or four times during one bar. So moving elbow is really crucial here. Um, I'm going to show you not the whole piece, but maybe the most important part that you might be curious about. The very first page and maybe uh, um, a tempo of here. So if you want to know, just stick a couple of minutes here. If you don't want to know, just skip it. So okay, so I'm usually I'm gonna play it very slow tempo and just tell you left or right. So that would mean that I move my elbow.
this part I think um, needs to be shown. analysis you're able to imagine both hands in your head in timber with movement you played with correct wrist and elbow movements uh, and then you start playing it with intonation and weight um, about this articulation thing that kind of part of intonation I do this tenuto here and I intonated with correct way of singing this articulation here as well to make this tenuto correctly. 
and um, yeah, like every channel to don't forget your intonated resistance and then the, the second part of the interval more weight and everywhere that you can find it over here I'm starting making accents to make this marcato sound. So I just want to show you how it's important to go to lesson about articulation and really test that lesson very well. It will help you even in this song. Now over here he wrote this accents because really if you don't do this accents that your melody will be drawn in all this thick texture of accompaniment so when you intonate again make sure you make this one without intonation and weight a little bit and then how I play with intonation and weight so again for those of you who maybe not discovered the importance of intonation you can see how it <laughs> clearly work, works and gives you some benefits for you when you're playing so without intonation I'm just imagining notes and playing with correct twist and elbow movement Again, we're not playing with any pedals so far.
position. Now I'm moving my torso here. additional freedom to your hands and to your body. So now we're gonna listen to harmonies of this beautiful song, this powerful harmony that makes the whole difference in this piece. And again the goal is to really feel the emotional color of every harmony, to be able then to imagine every note in timber in harmony with movement. So let's go ahead and listen to the harmonies. <laughs> or more again um, or calmer like more relieved so this is how we feel the difference sometimes you will feel even the real color of these harmonies <clears throat>
this music is about. <laughs> okay, so after that you imagine every note in timbre in this color of the harmony. And again playing it with movement, elbow movements, wrist style, elbow, wrist movement. I cannot. Every time I go to a musical world, then I come back to this um, words world. I cannot <laughs> gather myself. Um, yeah. So no. Um, so after that, you're playing with timbres and harmonies with movement, with correct wrist and elbow movement, intonating every interval with weight. Now, when you imagine every note in dynamics and voicing, um, I literally imagine everything in forte. Mm. I mean, if it's piano, it's piano. If it's forte, it's forte. Make sure you really imagine sound in a huge sound forte. Huge sound, really. Um, let's talk about voicing here. And of course we're going to voice the right hand, so every time we're voicing we imagine uh, the notes, the parts closer to ourselves. So of course I'm imagining melody and whatever I have even like two, uh, two double notes, I'm always imagining the top note in double notes. But in the left hand I really encourage you to imagine bass closer. So every time I play is not very well. When I'm playing here the bass sounds much more um, deeper, you know, and bigger. Uh, I don't like my concorder, I need to change it. So anyway, um, I'm actually voicing my bass in the left hand. Because that, if you have, you know, like melody here and bass over here, that will he give you this huge sounding full sound, you know? So every time try to, in the accompaniment, to voice just the uh, bass and hear bass. Um, that would be it. Um, over here, you know, in the left hand, I'm actually voicing the C. To complete this melody, because you know, it's like, I think, I don't know, but in my opinion, you're really missing this C. So even here, I'm voicing the C. just top notes in the right hand and bass in the left hand and of course on the very first uh, place it goes my melody here so. sound place, you know, in the sound, in the same place. It's very, um, very heavy to listen. So yeah, try to always find the parts that you voice. In the chorus it should be extreme voices or bass, and the melody of course on the very first plan, when you imagine notes. On the stage of sound texture, you simply imagine every note, again as usually, in the texture of deep water. So every sound you imagine in this deep, deep ocean water with movement. And again, that will bring um, more freedom to your hands and your body, as well as to your intonation. So this is how it looks like.
you don't make any harmony, you don't make any dynamics here, just um, sound texture. because now my imagination, what I imagine in my head, kind of match with a sound that the pedal produces. And after that you try imagine in sound texture, in harmony, in dynamics and voicing. If it's hard for you to make all right away, then just break it into several steps, like first sound texture, then sound texture with harmony, harmony dynamics and after that sound texture harmony dynamics and voicing about the structure of music. So the first step that is going to help us both musically and technically is playing with musical speech, understanding every meaning of every interval, understanding which interval you intonate while playing and intonate it with its meaning. Um, So for me it's very important to really catch intonation between chords that play unison, like here. You still intonate it with that meaning of unison, you know? And that will prevent you from not how to say sometimes when people play this song they don't you stop really feel every chord but when you actually feel this distance and intonation between every chord then you can control every chord much better um, so yeah guys this is another hard part of analysis here i'm even myself struggle here <laughs> But, I mean, try your best. Of course you can't catch every single melody interval, but at least in the melody you can catch, then... Over here, like, unison, then left hand goes to octave. At least one hand you can catch. Usually F, usually octave. Now let's talk about technical side. To feel this musical speech in um, some very important leaps. For example, here. You have to really understand this is second, 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 third, second, third, fourth, second. And in the left hand, always on the second, unison, and then you're going to fourth down, because basically between A flat and E flat, 
it's four. So that will really help you to do now right hand third, left hand fourth. I don't know how it works, but it really helps you to make sure you play it absolutely clear and intonate it with enough expressiveness and weight, you know? So in this case, 
and in the right hand mm, please make sure you intonate this unison this but this will bring this necessary expression is problems with clearness in the lips. First of all, make correct elbow movements, second of all, intonate it with musical speech, understand better which interval you play. It's about every, every, everything here. Like, I'm really understanding, I really feel that I'm intonating third down, third up. because in the past I really struggled with that but now it's really cool so every time you go from the melody to the bass understand every interval so let's go this is octave down kind of second down Left hand. 
hand. Always second down, second down, second down, second down in the right hand. Third down. And now this is very important one. Um, this is augmented fourth. Then so basically together. two parts with intervals. If you have problems in the left hand here, you play something like this. <laughs> then uh, again, clarify intervals that you intonate here. Sometimes it really takes not just hours of practicing without head, but really take your time Step your step yourself and just analyze each interval, even if it takes maybe ten minutes for you, and then just practice while understanding which interval you intonate with musical speech. And trust me, the very next day you will not have any problems here. It's better than just you know repeat it for months and never get any improvement. So yeah, this is another hard part to catch all the intervals in this song <laughs> over here. Oh my god, this is six. <laughs> okay, I was intonated as seven. Okay, well, never mind. It's over here. Octave and then six. And then three down, two down, three down, two down, two down, two down, two down, unison. You have to really analyze the energy of this tempo. Now here, you're going to diminish fifth. So intonate here, diminish fifth. Again, diminish fifth. It's gonna take much time for you to make it, but it's really helpful, it's really helpful. Phrasing is very important in this piece because it will help you to distribute energy within the whole piece and will help you to reach this large breath, large phrasing. Um, so I'm gonna be very detailed here. First I'm gonna show you uh, how I play by motifs. So you could see the limits of motifs, of course with the main intervals. Then I will uh, guide you and show you the structure of phrases with main motifs and structure of sentences with main phrases. So the first motif...
well that you just simply how you express it through playing you simply bring more weight to that interval so it's like less 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 more weight to the main interval and less 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 let, 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 let's continue <laughs> So even though there is like 
Third up, I'm still going to fifth down. So.
Now, this motif again has two motifs. This phrase again has two motifs, sorry. The, the third motif more important. So, first one.
Second less, second phrase less important. So here, first, oh, let me see that, oh my god. <laughs> okay, so first less, second more, first less, second more. less important and the last phrase more important. So first less, second less, a little bit more, and the last one, everything. First more, second less, first less, It's really much. 
much easier to play it. Um, you distribute energy, you don't bring everything in the very first, you know, line or first page. And you can crest the whole piece and you can make this huge, large breath in the phrasing of this song. Uh, so I think the phrasing and the harmony and the elbow movement is very important here, like these three things so far. <laughs> okay, so we're going to the next step. And in the next step, we simply analyze the form of the music. And I really apologize for this background noise. There are so many kids in Singapore, you know? So, I, I think that the school is about to start, so I better finish it soon. So, uh, in this song, we're gonna find out um, the parts of the form. Remember the parts, we have beginning, we have development, intensification, rising to climax, climax and conclusion. So basically this song consists of three huge parts and each of these parts consists of these small parts. So I will show you what I mean. So this one is like beginning. Starting from here From here, rising to climax. This part is climax. And this is the first huge part of this piece. Now, next middle part consists again with the small parts. The first one is beginning. consists of beginning, development, rising to climax, and this one, you know, when it's time to kind of to get to the culmination again, he mixes this part, it's like culmination that goes to beginning again but this beginning is like culmination <laughs> so you see so this one even though it's supposed to be culmination here he continues i do this like i get beginning now from here rising to climax now this part is climax actually conclusion but again this conclusion you know in the last part so it's like high energy conclusion <laughs> rising to climax and climax. Middle part has beginning, development, rising to climax, climax. The last part has beginning, 
development, rising to climax, beginning it, that meant to be the climax, then rising to climax, climax, this is the most important climax here, so this is like the climax of all the climaxes. <laughs> Um, and then conclusion, and then little rising to climax and climax in the end, just like little wave in the end. Uh, so when you do this, then you definitely can, after you, if the performer has this scheme, this plan in his mind, then the listener would definitely feel the form of the music, you know, he will definitely feel where is the beginning and he would definitely feel the climax itself and you know, he, he would have like this goosebumps and be like, <gasps> yes, this is climax. And the performer itself would feel the same. <laughs> so it's so much important, especially in Rachmaninoff music, because you know, all his all his music is always consists of the climax, the culmination itself, and there's just then the rest. Like all his music is like waves all the time. Uh, I absolutely love that. <laughs> and after that, like I said in the beginning again, it's very important to play everything in the steady tempo. So here I choose the pulsation by every quarter. So... Wherever I play, I always feel this pulsation. Uh, even if I feel think about phrasing and form, I always feel it in the pulsation. And um, the interesting thing that, again, he never wrote the time, the exact time, metronome time, you know, but he said appassionata, but it, again, depends on the image of the music. And um, for me, the image is very powerful and deep. That's why within that image, I wouldn't play it too fast. I mean, I can definitely play it fast, and I practice it much faster than I actually played it in the in the very beginning of this video, but then I realized when I play that I'm kind of losing the character of music. Um, so I suggest you to tune into this image again and feel this, of course it's not like calm pulsation, but it's like still a living pulsation, but it's still within that character. So I'm tuning into the image of the music, I'm feeling the pulsation, the heartbeat of this image. And I'm starting playing, you know, with all the things that I made before. And I always feel this pulsation, even though I sometimes um, make rubata to emphasize some parts, I uh, right away came back to the original tempo because I always feel this time and pulsation and beat um, inside me. And the last step, when you want to play it in front of the audience, you have to make it with artistry. Um, and again, this artistry will bring sta more steadiness to your performance and to your actual appearance itself. So you will um, keep your torso more straight and um, everything will be much easier to play again. Um, how to do artistry, I don't really want to, to, to talk about here. It's been a long video already, so I uh, just want to remind you that every little step, even artistry, I'm making in this video. Thank you guys so much, and um, <laughs> start facing training program. I already have some students that already started this, and I'm planning to make uh, some some sort of online school when I will post videos of all my students and you can see uh, all my students in the progress and hopefully will be inspired to try that as well. Um, thank you so much and see you in my next video. Bye bye!